Do you smell that? Do you smell that? I'm not talking about the coffee that you brew in the morning when waking up on a beautiful spring-like day. Windows cracked, sun peering in, the sound of dripping coffee into a nice empty coffee mug in the morning as you pour your sweet cream, stir it lightly, and you get that beautiful milky color and that aroma of freshly brewed coffee in the morning. I'm not talking about the fucking fragrance your wife was wearing when she got ready for work this morning. I'm not talking about the fucking shit diaper your son at 4 a.m. in the morning did. He shit his pants waking you up from a fucking beautiful dream. As you were dreaming of you on a beach with fucking scantily clad women. I'm not talking about the fucking steaming pile of shit your fucking husband took in the morning as he got ready for work on his way to shit, shower, and shave, man. The three S's. Did you smell that? I certainly did. It was the fucking displeasure of the WWE audience in Detroit tonight. Now, this was the last visual that we seen. Obviously, you guys want my opinion on Shane McMahon. We'll discuss it, goons. Believe me, we will discuss it. But the last image that we seen, and please, I welcome everybody in the comments section to comment with the hashtag JD was right. What did everybody say to me? What did everybody say to me when Roman Reigns won the WWE Championship on Monday Night Raw as it took Vince McMahon and the city of Philadelphia to get this man over? What happened? What happened after that Monday Night Raw? I was the only one. I was the only one who spoke his mind about that event. Because I knew what was coming. I knew what we were in for. And I got hate. I got death threats. I got fucking shit said about my family. I had fucking every curse word in the English language thrown at me in my direction because of what I thought about that Monday Night Raw. That Monday Night Raw review was the most disliked video I have ever done when it came to WWE. And where are we now? Where are we now, goons? The same people that watch that video certainly aren't watching me now. And if you are, you ain't saying a goddamn fucking thing. Because hashtag JD was right. WrestleMania 32 is five weeks away. WWE has positioned Triple H as the villain. Holding the WWE Championship winning the Royal Rumble, and screwing Roman Reigns. All in an effort to get this man over yet again. If Vince McMahon did such a great job, why? And here we go with the fucking questions again to begin Monday Night Raw review. I pose these questions to the WWE Universe. I pose these questions to every WWE official that is currently employed with WWE, who has any input on Monday Night Raw at all, I pose these questions to you tonight. If Triple H is the villain in this match, can you please explain to me why Triple H stood atop steel steps in which he just pedigreed Roman Reigns, and his bloody face, I might say, a bloodied Roman Reigns, Pedigreed onto his steel steps. Can you please tell me why Roman Reigns was being booed? And Triple H was being cheered. 
The last image we seen of Monday Night Raw as it went off the air was Triple H holding the WWE Championship up in the air atop the steel steps in which he just pedigreed a bloodied Roman Reigns, and the crowd erupted in cheer and admiration for this villain. Can you please explain to me why WWE is cheering the villain and booing the hero? I don't know. Hashtag JD was right. Vince McMahon did such a great job at getting this man over. This is question number two, by the way, goons. If Vince McMahon did such a great job at getting this man over, and you guys were so pleased with the way that Monday Night Raw ended, why are we seeing the worst of this Roman Empire garbage on Monday Night Raw? Can you please explain to me why Triple H took Roman Reigns' skull and, like a bowling ball, hitting fucking pins at the bowling alley. His head hit that announce table at least 13 fucking times, ultimately bloodying him up. And people were cheering. As Roman Reigns hit the fucking announce table with every hit, with every smash, with every drop of blood that dripped from his fucking nose, people were doing the yes chant. People were doing the yes chant in, in unison as they heard Roman Reigns' fucking face and skull hit the announce desk. I posed this question to the WWE. Why? Why? Roman Reigns was booed. Number three. Why is Roman Reigns and Sheamus in the main event again from Monday Night Raw? I mean, this segment alone, let alone that segment, the fucking third hour completely of this show. It forced me to email Dave Bogart over at ProWrestlingTees.com for a new design for Get Off My TV. The second installment of the Get Off My TV series of shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees. That's how much this main event in this third hour inspired me. Can you please tell me why you booked Roman Reigns and Sheamus again in the main event after you started this show off on fucking fire? What happened from the first hour to the last hour? What happened from the first segment to the last segment? It's like we're living in fucking polar opposites. It's like we're living in a fucking alternate universe. Was I watching the same show? Seriously. What happened? I don't know if I was watching Monday Night Raw anymore, man. I might have been shipped off to Gilligan's Island somewhere. I don't know where the fuck I landed. What happened here? All I know is I'm smiling. I'm smiling because hashtag JD was right. J.D. was right. You guys think I'm a fucking cocky asshole. You guys think I'm a conceited prick. You guys think I'm Mr. Know-It-All about the WWE product. I don't know shit. But I know what I see, and I know what I watch, and I know this WrestleMania main event is going to be a fucking failure. It's going to be a failure. And I'm smiling. <laughs> Come on, you fucking asshole. Seriously. This WrestleMania main... And, and let me tell you something. WWE, they are, they are late. The door is closed. The, key, the, fucking, the, the, the lock is fucking completely fucking obliterated, man. The key is thrown away. They are fucking stuck with what they have. They are fucking stuck. And a pit of quicksand, and they can't get out. They're fucking stranded on a desert island with no food, no water, and absolutely no fucking help to fucking help them at all with this main event, bro. They're stuck in Jurassic Park as the Raptors and the T-Rex are fucking wrecking havoc, eating and killing everybody, bro. This main event is fucking doomed. It has already failed. 
You have five weeks left of build. And Monday Night Raw rolls through Brooklyn, Chicago, and Philadelphia. Three of the five weeks. You're telling me this is the worst we've seen? You have to be out of your fucking mind if you think Roman Reigns going into WrestleMania, winning the WWE Championship after a string of Monday Night Raws, starting with what we've seen tonight, is going to be a fucking success. You have to be out of your fucking mind. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Because, hashtag, JD was right. I've been preaching it, bro. I've been preaching it for months. And WWE has shown you that they're a bunch of ignorant assholes who don't want to take a risk. And taking a risk on Roman Reigns, turning him heel, to finally get this man genuine reaction, that's the way to go. But no, someone in the back clearly thinks that the villain in Triple H being cheered is the right business move. It's best for business. But when Jerry Jones and all of the fucking AT&T Stadium higher-ups and officials are sitting up in the press box with Vince McMahon, and they're sitting up there with Stephanie, and they're watching this main event completely fall apart at the seams, what's going to happen? Vince is going to look like an embarrassment, WWE is going to look like an embarrassment, and WrestleMania is going to look like an embarrassment. No matter how much money they made and how many records they broke, they will look like a fucking embarrassment. And I'm going to sit there and laugh. Why? You guys know why. Because hashtag JD was right. If that picture at the end of Monday Night Raw does not speak volumes, if that entire beatdown segment does not speak volumes, I don't know what else to tell you. I really don't. Roman Reigns will never... Never get over. Roman Reigns will be successful as a face. Roman Reigns will never be accepted. Never be accepted as the WWE Champion. Do the right thing, WWE. If tonight is not any indication that you need to fucking rewrite this entire angle... And rewrite this entire story the way it should have been written. I don't know what else to tell you. Illogical booking and illogical storytelling. Especially when the crowd is telling you what they want. Pisses me the fuck off. I've been watching this product for far too long. To be criticized about what I think about the product by anybody. I know what I see and I know what I want and I know what is right. That's the theme of the fucking episode tonight. Never. Never. He will never get over. And I will continue to say it, and I will continue to laugh at every fucking individual who tells me that I'm wrong. The only one who actually thinks this is a good thing are the fucking Instagram fucking losers who have no life. The fucking Twitter losers, the seven, eight-year-old fucking teenage girls who fucking don't know their head from their ass. They're the ones cheering Roman Reigns. They will understand the fucking product. That's the theme of the fucking show tonight. And that's all I got to say about Roman Reigns. That's the way I wanted to start off because that visual, that lasting visual, that ending visual, that closing segment pissed me off and I couldn't wait to sit in front of this microphone and go off WWE is absolutely fucking out of their mind if they think this Wrestlemania main event is going to be anything but a failure this is a failure before we even get to Wrestlemania it's dead it is dead end it or rewrite it that's it
Now, on to the positivity of the show. Nobody, and I mean nobody, predicted Shane McMahon. Nobody. There's one person besides Jeff Hardy who has been constantly battered down to every YouTube fucking wrestling content creator. If there's one name that's been on the forums about when is he returning, when is he coming back, do you see him coming back? Do you see him fucking coming back? Do you see him coming back? How many fucking times can you ask the same question over and over again? So to all those people that finally fucking gave up asking, there you go. Shane McMahon is back in the WWE. Was I surprised? Everybody was fucking surprised. Nobody predicted Shane McMahon back on Monday Night Raw. Nobody predicted Shane McMahon to be put in a match with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. Nobody predicted that the match would be booked by Vince McMahon and it would be inside a Hell in a Cell. Nobody. What do I think of this? Well, first of all, the segment on Monday Night Raw to open the show tonight went about 35 minutes and it was probably the best segment I've seen in close to a decade on Monday Night Raw. It was that good. And if you DVR'd it, go back and watch it, and watch it again, and again, and again. Shane McMahon got a better reaction than every active wrestler on the WWE roster in 2016. Shane McMahon was more over than anybody on the WWE roster in the last 10 years, except a Daniel Bryan. What the fuck does that tell you? That's obviously illogical right there, and WWE is the only one to blame for that. The segment was fire. The segment hit home, and the segment reeked of truth. WWE scripted this brilliantly. And on top of that, when you got Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon, and Stephanie McMahon on top of their game, you can expect nothing less than an entertaining segment that will leave you wanting more. And that's exactly what they did tonight. The welcoming sight of Shane McMahon back on Monday Night Raw and back in the WWE ring and in the company in general was a breath of fresh air. He was on top of his fucking game tonight. I never seen a reaction like that before except for when Daniel Bryan was doing his thing with the WWE Championship. Never. They got a holy shit chant. They got a this is awesome chant. They got a fucking Shane O'Mac chant. I don't know what the fuck was going on there, bro. But literally, the segment stopped for about a good four to five minutes to let the crowd just get all the energy out of their system. This is unbelievable. An absolutely unbelievable segment that will go down as one of the best in recent memory on Monday Night Raw. WWE came out swinging for the goddamn fences with this segment because they knew Fastlane was a goddamn joke. So WWE... Kept this a surprise. Nobody knew this was happening. Great way to start the show off. More than great way. An absolutely fantastic way to start the show off. Stephanie McMahon was about to accept the Vincent J. McMahon Award. Obviously, I was about to fucking tweet. Jesus Christ, this is going to be another five weeks of the authority being shoved down our throats and meaningless fucking garbage. Please save me. Because Stephanie McMahon was... The recipient of this award, everybody said either Triple H or John Cena. John Cena to help promote a match with The Undertaker. Yada, yada, yada. You guys know how that goes. But when Shane's music hit, everybody fucking stopped what they were doing. Chills went up and down our arms. I was fucking in shock, just like the rest of you guys. And it made for an absolutely memorable moment on Monday Night Raw. Absolutely fucking memorable. I know you guys were excited. I was excited. Everybody was excited. Shane McMahon looks great. And to see him dancing on top of that fucking stage, man, was just unbelievable. Shane McMahon back on Monday Night Raw. Now, the power struggle that will ensue. He wants control of Monday Night Raw. He mentioned that Triple H and Stephanie were running the product into the ground. The ratings, the injuries, the f everything that we've been complaining about. Everything we've been complaining about for months, Shane brought up. The stock market falling. The fucking stock losing money. Everything. Literally everything. I don't even have to explain. You guys know what's wrong with the product. You guys know what's wrong. Shane brought it up. 
So there was some truth written into this script, and I appreciate that because I've always said that when you bring real-life elements and the concerns of the fans into storylines, that makes for better television and storylines that we can say, you know what, I want to see what happens next. So I appreciate that fact. Shane wants to take over Monday Night Raw. He wants to be in complete control of Monday Night Raw. So he made a deal with Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon said, you can have what you want, but you have to go through WrestleMania, through a match with The Undertaker, and not only that, it's going to be inside Hell in a Cell. Now, I'm hyped for this match regardless because it's very intriguing. The outcome of this could swing either way, you know? I don't give a shit if The Undertaker, if this match actually does happen, which I'll talk about in a second. I don't give a shit if The Undertaker ends up losing this match. I really don't. If it, means, if it means Shane McMahon on TV every Monday, I'm okay with that. The Undertaker losing at WrestleMania does nothing anyway. It's the fucking Undertaker. He lost at Mania, he's got that one streak and that one, that one loss, and that one loss is all he needed. Nobody cares about the streak anymore. Undertaker is still Mr. WrestleMania. Always will be. But if he loses another match, people are going to shrug their shoulders and be more concerned with the storyline that will develop the next night on Monday Night Raw instead of The Undertaker. Oh my God, he's got two losses at WrestleMania. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit, really? I'm hyped for this match if it does happen. Now, now, the match with Shane is intriguing. Number one, because it gives The Undertaker someone to work with who isn't a Braun Strowman, who isn't a John Cena, who isn't a Brock Lesnar, who isn't fucking anybody on the active roster, who's an actual fucking wrestler. It might be a lighter workload for The Undertaker, okay? Shane McMahon can bump like the best of them. Now, obviously, we haven't seen him back in the WWE or in a ring in several years, so we don't know how his body is holding up. We don't know if he'd be able to take those bumps like he did back in the Attitude Era. But I'm sure uh, Shane McMahon is, is, in, is in shape. I'm sure Shane McMahon will be ready to go. And being in front of 100,000 people inside Hell in a Cell, you can guarantee fucking T that WWE and Shane McMahon will pull out every fucking stop that is available to them to make this memorable. I have no doubt that this match will be memorable because they will want to make it memorable. So I'm not concerned about that. The only thing I'm concerned with is that will the WWE stick to their guns with this match? Or will WWE substitute someone for Shane McMahon and Shane McMahon will merely be in the corner of a chosen opponent? Could that opponent be John Cena? We don't know. But as of right now, this is the match WWE is going with. So there's an opportunity for that to still happen. Okay, number two, if this match still is on the table and does happen at WrestleMania, what happens with John Cena? John Cena is not missing WrestleMania. I would put the fucking house, the kids, the dog, the cat, the car on John Cena being at WrestleMania. I don't think John Cena will miss 100,000 people in attendance at WrestleMania. I don't give a shit what happens. Cena will be there and he will be in the ring. Okay, but who does John Cena go up against? Does John Cena go after the United States Championship? Does John Cena have a match with an opponent to be named later? Do, do, does WWE go out and sign a Kurt Angle to put against John Cena at WrestleMania to give us yet another marquee match? You know, there's nobody on the roster that we want to see John Cena go up against. God forbid a Randy Orton, a Bray Wyatt, this one, that one. John Cena ran through them all. There's really nobody. The match with The Undertaker was the most interesting match out of everybody on the active roster. So who does it, who does it go to? I don't know. Or maybe Cena does really miss WrestleMania. But I doubt he will. So WWE either will substitute Shane McMahon for John Cena and put John Cena in this match with The Undertaker. Or John Cena has a special opponent that WWE is going out there to get to fill another marquee slot on WrestleMania. That's just my opinion on that. Number three, and this opens up the door, okay? WrestleMania, supposedly going to be the biggest show that WWE ever puts on. Shane McMahon, obviously, is not going to get this done by himself. If he's locked in hell in a cell, he will obviously have help. Where does the help come from? At this point, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows 
will be in WWE. They will be signed. They will be ready to go. Does Shane McMahon, does Shane McMahon hire outside sources to help him win this match against The Undertaker, making The Undertaker's loss, you know, don't, you know, that would not make The Undertaker's loss all that devastating. If he, if he loses due to outside interference on behalf of Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, that would lighten the blow. Does Shane McMahon hire the Bullet Club and win, take over Monday Night Raw, and now is the leader of the new Bullet Club? Does he promote Finn Balor? And we have the Balor Club, which Shane McMahon is in charge of. It could happen. It could happen. This is something that I was thinking about during Monday Night Raw. Shane McMahon winning due to outside interference from Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. The Bullet Club and Shane McMahon leading that stable into the new era of Monday Night Raw. You bring up Finn Balor, boom. There you go. It could happen. It could happen. I don't know. A lot of you guys mentioned John Cena turning heel at WrestleMania and screwing The Undertaker, helping Shane McMahon win. I don't know. I don't know if I'm all for that. I think that ship is, has, has fucking long gone, sailed away. Cena turning heel. The only one that you need to be concerned with turning heel is Roman Reigns. Fuck a John Cena. That ship is gone. I like the Bullet Club idea the best out of all three. That's my thoughts on that. Absolutely explosive segment on Monday Night Raw. Fucking unbelievable. The crowd was so hyped for this. And it finally felt like WWE was redeeming themselves. Did this save the disgrace of a pay-per-view that was Fastlane? Did it make up for the fucking awful pay-per-view known as Fastlane? Of course it didn't. WWE did more damage on that pay-per-view than they did in recent months. So... The Monday Night Raw that we got tonight to open the show in the first hour was needed because tonight started the real road to WrestleMania. Tonight, WWE came out, like I said, swinging for the fences and they fucking hit a grand slam in that first hour because they not only capitalized on Shane McMahon, but they gave us hype for WrestleMania. Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar is now official for WrestleMania. The Wyatt family pretty much scrapped and that feud with Lesnar is gone. So the Royal Rumble situation that happened with the Wyatts and Lesnar pretty much meant nothing. You go back and watch that, it will mean nothing when you go back and view that. WWE scrapped that. They figured Lesnar versus Ambrose is the better way to go. So this match will be a street fight. No holes barred. Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar. Okay. We got Shane McMahon tentatively versus The Undertaker in Hell in a Cell. Roman Reigns versus Triple H. We're going to get a three-way dance, triple threat with the Divas. Sasha, Becky, and Charlotte. That's coming. I can guarantee that as well. AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, possibly versus Chris Jericho. Triple threat there for the IC title. Or it could be Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles one-on-one. -on -one. Either way you look at it, it's still going to be fucking phenomenal. So Kevin Owens and AJ Styles involved. You want to throw Chris Jericho in there? Fine. That might be happening as well. You book Neville versus Kalisto for the United States Championship. We still have a John Cena match that I'm pretty sure is going to happen, but against two, I don't know. Where does this leave Bray Wyatt? Randy Orton is rumored to be coming back for WrestleMania. Why don't you put Randy Orton back in the WWE fold and have him feud with Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania? I think that'd be a great match. And Randy Orton is more of a titan than anybody when compared to Braun Strowman, then fucking Kane and Ryback and Big Show, you know? I'd like to see that match. And if Randy Orton is healthy, why the fuck not? New Day versus the Usos versus the Dudleys for the Tag Team Championship or a fucking Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Championship. I don't know. I'm tired of these multi-man matches, man, and coming up with these multi-man matches for WrestleMania. That's just the way I, I see it. I want, I want two versus two, you know? A lot of people saying bring up Enzo and Cass. I honestly think at this point, WWE is not going to bring up Enzo and Cass for WrestleMania because they'll kind of get lost in the shuffle. If you want that big pop and that big surprise, have the New Day win the titles at WrestleMania and retain the titles at WrestleMania. And then on Monday Night Raw, the following night after WrestleMania, Enzo and Cass come out and win the titles in front of a hot fucking crowd following WrestleMania. I think that's the way they're going to go. 
I honestly think that's the way they're going to go. But as far as the New Day goes, uh, you know, obviously the Usos and the Dudleys are going to be involved. I don't know where WWE's going with the tag team titles, but that's the way it could go and more than likely will go. So WrestleMania isn't looking all that shabby right now. But there are still fucking groundbreaking major situations here that could fucking derail this entire event. Seriously. Where does The Rock place? Will Shawn Michaels be there? Blah, blah, blah. What else do they got in store for us? So, will Seth Rollins come back? There's a lot of fucking questions and a lot of answers. So, we got five more weeks till WrestleMania. And it's going to be an interesting road. But the way WWE handled things tonight, started the show fucking awesome. And by hour three, this show completely went to fucking garbage. And now you know why everybody's fucking preaching about Monday Night Raw going back to two hours. If this was a two-hour show, it would have been phenomenal. But three hours, right down the fucking toilet, as always. What happened on the rest of the show? Does it really even matter? Of course not. All that matters is what happened in the first hour. Neville and the Lucha Dragons versus the New Day. New Day beat the Lucha Dragons and Neville Trouble in Paradise to Sin Cara. Looked like Sin Cara botched the ending and his mask almost came off. I believe Kofi had grabbed his mask and lifted up. And he was more concerned about being unmasked and somehow botched the ending. So it kind of looks sloppy there, but Trouble in Paradise to Sin Cara at 15 minutes and 30 seconds. Usos versus The Ascension. Nothing mattered here. Usos beat The Ascension. Ascension didn't even get an entrance. And that's one big thing about their appearance and their overall presentation is their entrance. They didn't get one. So Usos beat Ascension Superfly Splash to Victor at 2 minutes. Chris Jericho and AJ Styles versus Heath Slater and Curtis Axel. I don't care. I expected Kevin Owens to come out here, but instead we get the social losers. And uh, I'm assuming Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, they're, they're, they're waiting for that for a couple of more weeks. You know, we still have a long way to go for WrestleMania. So I'm assuming they're, they're waiting for that. It would have been nice to hear another match announcement to get everybody even more hyped about WrestleMania. And I figured, why not? They announced Ambrose versus Lesnar. They announced Triple H versus Roman Reigns. They got... Uh, you know, Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker. Why not keep that going and announce the IC title? I expected Kevin Owens to come out there and start trash-talking AJ Styles, but we didn't get it. So we have that to look forward to. I'm assuming that's going to be the direction WWE's going in. So tonight we got a tag team match that nobody fucking cared about. Jericho and AJ Styles beat the social outcast Walls of Jericho to Curtis Axel. Why WWE thought we would like to see this match again after the fucking abomination that it was on Fastlane. Ryback, Big Show, and Kane versus the Wyatt Family. 50-50 booking rears its ugly head. Nobody gives a shit about the Wyatt Family. Nobody gave a shit about them last night. And winning this match does nothing for them. At all. But, in the end here, Ryback abandons Kane and Big Show and talks about grabbing the brass ring and breaking the glass ceiling. Listen, nobody gives a fuck about you grabbing a brass ring and breaking the glass ceiling when the most important part of this when the, when the most exciting part of this match is people chanting Gilberg you know you're floating up shit's creek, uh, shit's creek bro Ryback is absolutely fucking meaningless on WWE television you can attempt to break the glass all you want bro nobody will ever 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 fucking care Please. Why this match happened, I don't know. Enough of this shit already. Now you know why I'm getting the fucking t-shirt with all three of these fucking assholes on it. Get off my TV and come back. Please. Do me and everybody else a fucking favor. Sasha Banks versus Naomi. I don't care. Just give me the fucking triple threat. And move on. Sasha Banks beats Naomi with the bank statement 645. Charlotte comes out. And they're just teasing here and there. It'll happen. It'll happen. Godfather. Pimpin' hoes nationwide. It'll be pimpin' hoes down in Dallas, Texas too. He's going into the Hall of Fame. And then Roman Reigns versus Sheamus. You guys know the deal about that. I don't need to go over it again. We discussed it at the outset of this video. So that's the Monday Night Raw review. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments below. Thank you to all the new people that have subscribed following the Fast Lane Weekend. Greatly appreciate it. Like I always say, man, you are going to get the most brutal, honest opinion of the WWE product here. If you like it, 
Fantastic, man. Welcome to Team JD. If you don't like it, well, I don't know what else to tell you, man. Go fuck yourself. That's all I got to say about that. Hashtag JD was right. Hit the thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'll be back with more, as always, this coming weekend off the script. As always, if you missed off the script this weekend, links will be down below. If you missed the podcast on iTunes, Audio Boom, Stitcher Radio, and Podbean, links are down below. Go and download that motherfucker and leave me a five-star rating on iTunes. That's all I ask, bro. That's all I ask. Seriously. But if you guys did enjoy the video, let me know what you're thinking down below. And I'll see you guys this Wednesday on Out of Nowhere with Joe Cronin. And then Friday for Off the Script. I'm JD. This is the number one fucking source for WWE right here on YouTube.com, and I'll see you guys later this week, man. Thank you for watching.